taking a fright from the tortoise. And there is Ronald, you can see. Now, as we got here, someone said, well, are elephants scared of tortoises? Because they, we know that they're afraid of mice, which of course was just a joke, but clearly they are afraid of tortoises. That was hilarious. Poor little tortoise is obviously after the same thing that the elephant is, and that's marula fruits. Anyway, let's go across to Ronald's feed and have a look at him, see what he can see of this elephant. There's Ron. Oh no, that's horrible. I can't believe that. He's destroying this tortoise. That is dreadful. That really makes one feel very little affection for this very nasty kind of thing. So you didn't see there, but what he did was he kicked the tortoise. And I don't know if he stomped on him or her, but Ronald is now frozen in terror that the same fate might befall him. <laughs> And you can see Ronald has got a, an entirely new get-up. He's sort of got ready for uh, for TV. You can see he's got a wooden frame now. It's camouflaged. It's got a special grid at the back. And this elephant, which is behaving in a manner not unlike that of a spoilt child, well, is producing some fear for him. Let's go back to Ronald's picture and have a look at what Ronald can see. There we are. You can just see this quite astounding pictures there, this elephant eating marula fruits. Now the tortoise is behind the elephant. I'm going to suggest that we do not drive Ronald behind the elephant to see if he can spot the tortoise just yet. I think given the very poor attitude of this elephant, we should leave Ron exactly where he is. He hasn't reacted to the tort, at least to the rover at all. But jeepers, he did not enjoy that tortoise, did he? I mean, I'll be, I'll be astounded if that tortoise has survived that. It was a really hard kind of uh, petulant kick. Yes, yes, Ian, you say Ellie's are pretty good at making other critters into paste. They are pretty good at that sort of thing, uh, given their size. I believe, actually, that um, on a rather morbid note, in India, they used to train elephants for execution. So if you were a particularly naughty person, you'd have your head put on a block, and an elephant, rather like a sort of more modern circus elephant would rear up on its back legs and then stomp on your pip, as it were. And, uh, well, that obviously resulted in a fairly swift demise. The same tortoise, same fate that befell this tortoise. I don't think he stood on it. I think he just kicked it. But the dexterity of its trunk just amazing. I think we'll leave Ronald sitting precisely where he is. Oh, there is the tortoise now. We've got the tortoise on the main camera. I don't see any movement there. Not that you'd expect to see sort of breathing. Let me see with my binoculars if I can't see the head or feet coming out. There's some movement there. Ha! How fantastic. The tortoise has survived. Well, I don't know if it's uninjured. But it seems to be relatively alive. Shame. Now, what we need is a little sort of gentle taser on Ronald so that he can give the elephant a little bit of a disciplinary shock on the ankles. Bzz. I think that would be a mistake. I think the elephant would take great 
a fence of that. Look how many marulas he's eating and how amazingly dexterous that trunk is. So greedy. So greedy, says Seb. Most of those, of course, will come out completely intact. And for those of you who are experiencing your first marula season, these marula fruits cannot germinate, apparently, unless they have passed through the digestive system of an elephant. And it is the most astounding kind of convergent evolutionary process here, where the tree has learnt that in order to be most effective, what it needs to do is drop the fruits on the ground before they ripen so that the elephant doesn't push the tree over in order to get at the fruit that it loves so much. Now, Dances with Gert, Dances with Dirt, what a wonderful name, Dances with Dirt. You say, how old is this elephant? Well, your clue, apart from his size, obviously, in the normal things we look at, your clue is the way he reacted to that tortoise. You'll probably find that largely elephants over the age of 25 wouldn't have done that to a tortoise. I would put this guy at between 18 and 20 years old, just kind of a bit petulant still. He's young. He is frustrated, I suppose, because he's been tossed out of the herd. He doesn't have any friends. And so, unfortunately, anything that gets in his way that is smaller than him is going to get bear the brunt of his frustrations. Oh, David, you say, how many knees? I thought you said how many leaves. Uh, how many knees does an elephant have? Oh dear, don't turn to Ronald now. An elephant has got two knees, same as you. And that's not what we're looking at there. What you're looking at, no, no, that's perfectly all right, because most people think of what we looked at there as the knee. No, that's an elbow. <laughs> you've got to go to the back leg. Yeah, that's the knee there. Sorry, so that's the knee joint. Okay. And it's interesting. I love this discussion. So there's the knee. And if you go down the leg there, you can see there's the ankle. Bends the same way as ours. And then the toe bones they extend into that flat foot there. Then if we go to the front, I'll explain to you what that knee joint is that Sebastian identified as the knee. That is the wrist. That is exactly the same joint as your wrist. And if we follow up from there, there is your elbow. And then, of course, the shoulder is slightly hidden. There we go, inside there. So just about all mammals have got bones that are, well, in fact, all mammals have got bones that are easily identifiable on all other mammals, although they will be, of course, of different shapes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Please do not hit that thing. Please, I beg you, leave him alone. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Well, Ronald's okay still. No, don't stand on it. No, no, no. No, please. Oh, no. <laughs> Just leave him be. He's not moving, he's not doing anything. I can't believe ro ro <laughs> he, Ronald is still looking. He's, his view is unhindered, which means his new casing is obviously extremely effective, courtesy of Conrad and Scott Dyson. So big congratulations to them. I think we're going to hope desperately that this elephant disappears from here, or maybe we should just back Ronald off. I think let's back him off. We'll just quietly move him back. 
Yeah, let's just keep moving him back there. That's nice. You can see us behind there. No, he's leaving. He's leaving. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> now he can't move. <laughs> Now, this, of course, was always going to be one of the risks that Ronald faced. And he's had a tough time with elephants before. They have kicked him over and into water at one stage. But isn't it interesting how he reacted to the tortoise in precisely the same way? So he's obviously a frustrated, spoiled little brat, this fellow. Yeah in need of a good thrashing from a big bull. Poor old Ron. At least, well, Ronald's still got a picture, which means he's still functioning perfectly well. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're going to try desperately to extract Ronald from this rather sticky situation. While we do that, let's head across to Tristan Dix, who I have no doubt will be in fits of hysterical laughter. Well, we're still sitting here with our elephant. We managed to retrieve Ronald. He's back on the bonnet of the car. Uh, that means the herd, if you're uh, in the United States. There he is. He's uh, a little bit worse for wear. I mean, I won't say that he's entirely okay, but uh, I think he's survived pretty well. Now, we've got a question about what a marula fruit tastes like. I'm afraid I missed the, the name. Um, it tastes like a marula fruit. There's nothing else in the world that tastes like a marula fruit. It has the consistency of, well, the kind of, um, I guess a little bit like a lychee, or what some people call a lychee, except that the flesh is very much less, so it's got proportionately far less flesh. But really, nothing else tastes like it. It's quite a kind of um, almost floral taste to it, if you like, and very sweet very um they can be quite tart very high in vitamin c so, so sweet and tart and a kind of floral taste to them they don't taste like citrus at all uh, that's the best i can do i'm afraid let's have a look back at our elephant there and you know we came and we rescued ronald and the rescue of ronald didn't have that elephant reacting in the slightest then some waterbuck came up here and they got chased away, he got very angry with them. Dora, you say, why do the elephants love these things if they don't even taste them? I imagine they taste quite a few of them, you know, they do bite into them, although they don't kind of swallow and savour them. I think, you know, many of the things that we think taste good are good for us. In other words, they have some kind of nutritional benefit. And that is the case for the marula fruit and the elephant. So I think you'll find that although you know they enjoy eating them, they make them feel good in some way, it's not necessarily the taste. You know, we have got a far more sophisticated taste system than most animals in the world. And so I think you'll find it's probably got not a huge amount to do with taste and much more to do with the effect that the animals or that the marula fruits have on these animals. Okay, I think he's going to wander off probably down towards the so we can get a better view. Well done, Ronald. You did a very good job today. Survived admirably. Also some water buck just up ahead there that he chased off. He wasn't having, he wasn't going to share anything with anyone today. 